Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice 1 to 1. In today's video we are going to look an, at an ERM EV charge point. This is a new one on my channel, we've not shown these before. We're going to have a look at Matthew and Nathan popping one of these into a customer's um, EV installation later on in this video. But to start with I thought we'd have a look at the product as it comes out of the box. Some of the instructions that come with it and the way these need to be installed some of the key features and possible pros and cons. We'll have a look at the guys getting this out on a wall somewhere and then we'll talk through the installation as a whole as well. So let's get straight to it. Let's see what's inside the box. Okay, so this is as it comes direct from Erm and it's pretty simple actually. We'll have a look through the instructions in a sec so we'll just cast those aside for the time being. Really nice packaging, it's all just in cardboard, so it's all fully recyclable which is brilliant. And they do send a little CT clamp in this package here, which is obviously for your load management and also a little Wago box in there with the connectors as well. So everything you need to get your CT connected is in the box, which I like, that is great. Uh, we've also got the holster holder here. So for those of you who've seen the Hypervolts on the channel before already, that's a very similar thing to that. So we've got the screws and plugs as well, all included in the kit. We fit black screws on these holsters, as you'll have seen already, so I'm sure Matthew and Nathan will change away from those when they're installing that. Um, now the erm itself, and we will have a better look at this out on site, but just to show you the kind of sizes of it, it's um, pretty small square shape, and you know, it's a reasonable depth, as is similar to most of the other EV charge points on the market, but low profile um, in terms of its overall size simple to use and they all come tethered so you can't get an untethered version of these they all have the leads pre-wired you've got the little cap on the end there as well this one's got five meters of cable with it now one of the differences with them to lots of the other ev charge point manufacturers is it comes pre-wired with the um, supply cable if you like so this is the cable that feeds power into it you get a meters long length lead that's pre-wired into the charger itself and I imagine that's perhaps due to the small wiring space within the charger. Um, they maybe don't want electricians poking about inside there making the termination. So they've done that for us. And you get this little length of cable here, which has got your line neutral and your CPC. And also the little um, cables here, which are for your CT clamp. They're all in the same cable here. And it's a bit like um, NYY, I guess in the way it's outer sheathed and then an inner little cover there, the inner little jacket. There's no steel wire armorings in it and you can see here that the conductors are six mil. Um, and yeah, that's sort of that one. So the way this has to be wired is that obviously goes into a junction box close by to the, um, you know, a meter's length is not gonna usually be, be long, anything like long enough. So you get a, a meter to a little junction box and again the guys are going to show you that later on in the video we'll have a little look through the the manual here um not the quick sight guide because there's some interesting features to this um product that i wanted to speak about you get all the usual bump about making sure you get an electrician to install it and that it gets done to the wiring regs but i want to jump straight over to this section here where it's speaking about the residual current function so it's saying it's got type a 30 milliamp rcd protection built in and it does have that dc 6 milliamp as well in there so everything in terms of rcd protection is built into this charger for what it needs uh, also it's got pen fault detection and they've specifically registered the reg there that it complies with you know there's often some debate about this as to how effective these pen fault devices are well this is um saying this meets the intent of that reg so that's nice to know and you know it's a 32 amp 7.4 kilowatt all the usual basics for your voltage inputs uh, and your um, ratings now one of the, the key variants of this is the data communication you'll see there it's 2g 3g and 4g so this comes with a sim card in i imagine to connect onto a cellular network um, so it tells you here about the input cable the tethered with your type 1 and type 2 variants and that everything comes in the box. And here at the top you've got, the ERM um, has pen fault detection, the RCD inside is type A, six milliamp DC, and the unit uses the 4G mobile phone network, and it's pre-configured to connect to the ERM um backend server automatically. 
So this will connect straight into ERM's system through a cellular network. So it says here, ERM's units are sealed. In most cases, you'll need to provide a junction box to connect to the supply and that it comes with a CT clamp. Then goes on to tell you the basics about how you mount it. One of the interesting things that some people might like to know is the fly lead is 15.2 mil diameter. So it's a number six cable cleat, or if you're using the linear clips, I think they come in the 12 to 15, 16 mil variant. They're the ones you need for that cable. Very similar to if you're trying to use them on NYY, same sort of size. And it says there it's, it's a meter long, as I've already mentioned. Uh, it tells you here about the RCD as well. So on first powering it up, it's in installer mode. So when we come to test it, um, it resets after two seconds to speed up the RCD tests. Obviously, when we're running through that test sequence, it's often a bit of a faff trying to get these charge points to play a ball. The ohms thought about that, love that, that's brilliant, makes our life easier. It says here about the type A 30 milliamp RCD built in. And in some cases, if you're using an armored cable clip to a wall, the supply to the charger can be fed direct from a double pole MCB to permit isolation. And I guess if you're happy with a main switch on the install being able to form part of that isolation so you can open all poles, you could still use a single pole MCB, or even if you were stacking your RCDs, I know with selectivity and such, we shouldn't really be doing that, but if you were using a twin and earth cable, for example, to feed into this, you would have to. And it does tell you that you're able to do that here. Um, it says here, to avoid blinding of RCDs, we recommend that any upstream RCD is at least type A. So if you want to do that, you can, and that will obviously give you a point of double pole isolation as well. Uh, it says here about the earthing arrangement and how it's got the pen fault detection built in and it'll disconnect the vehicle from line neutral and earth if the voltage is above or below pre prescribed levels so greater than 257 and less than 207 and it can go straight on a pme supply um, so yeah that's great and it tells you here about the pen fault detection when it's activated after the voltage is recovered it won't reconnect the vehicle for five minutes so it will auto reset very similar to the Matty new pen fault detection device, which also auto resets. So that's a good point of note that it's a passive device and it's automatically resetting itself. It will not automatically reset any operation of the MCB, for example. Uh, it says here, overcurrent protection, none's provided in the Ohm Pro and it recommends using a 40 amp type C MCB. And this explains the colors of the wires and such. So I mean, the rest of it's, all pretty straightforward it explains about load balancing and how the ct clamp works so it says here um where load balance is activated if the ct clamp is removed or faulty the unit reverts to 16 amps charge rate so it reverts to a safe state so if your ct breaks down or someone unclips it you know there's no danger of it ever putting that service fuse at risk which i like that's a good thing because customers will soon start to complain about that if someone's been messing about reading the meter wondering what that clamp is and taking it off when the car doesn't charge up as fast, they'll be on the phone rather than on the phone after the service fuse has gone pop. Uh, explains here about the 4G network and the grid sympathetic charging. So obviously the law's changing in June, as I've mentioned before on the channel before, and these have to allow some sort of control for the DNOs and suppliers, and this is ready for that. So that's nice to see. I think it actually even referenced that it becomes more important to avoid disruptive upgrades. Yeah, so the kind of, this was obviously written before that law was coming into place. But it's nice to see that they have done that at a um, bit of forward thinking. It then gives you all the BS numbers that it complies to. So you've got your EV charge point, uh, your residual direct current detecting device, and um, all of the other EMCs and plugs and sockets and other BS numbers that are applicable to an EV charger. And uh, that's it, that's that's got the manual. You get a quick user guide as well, which is obviously for the consumer, but you can go through it yourself. So you get power, scan the code, install the app, and just run through the process. I'll let the lads show you this out on the job rather than me just speaking through it here, but you can choose your energy supplier and set up what notifications you want and all the rest of it. Pretty similar to lots of the other apps that are out there, but there are some unique features on this one that are best explained um, with the actual charger turned on. So with that said, we'll um, hand this over to the great duo installers, Matthew and Nathan, who are going to get on with this out on site. We'll get it mounted to the wall, get it turned on, see how it all works and run through the commissioning and the app as well. Catch up with you in a bit.
So this is the guys out on site now and you can see they're giving us a good run through the existing consumer unit. You'll notice it's a split load board and there's quite a bit of containment and boxing in running around it. Supply for this is just off um, a metered supply through the walls. We've got a 100 amp service head, tails through into here and then obviously away to all the final circuits. They're just walking through the proposed route for the, the cable run so you can see we've got to work our way around this garage and then over to the other side wall just punch through and put the charge point on the corner just outside here and i think the guys are going to give us a little wander around and have a look what is outside i'm hoping so i'm watching this for the first time with you um but yeah that's where the cable's going to drop down in the corner i would have said and then just out here we are going to get the charge point on the wall and i think matthew's probably going to demonstrate that yes he is so he has listened after all, you can see that's the ohm that's going to go out on the, the corner there, ready for the customer to charge up. So this is Matty popping the drill through, just checking Nathan's hit record I think. And you can see there, away they go. He's off inside to check, make sure he's got a good unbroken, smashed out block on the inside. And he's done reasonably well there. And he's just popping a second hole through here, and that's because we're not using EV Ultra. We are bringing a separate data cable down just because we're inside the garage. And to be honest, the cost of EV Ultra and availability is a bit of a problem at the minute. So they've got the two holes punched through there. You can see they've got the cat cable and the NYY all laid out ready to get clipped around this garage. And the guys are going to get on with that in a little bit. You can see there Matthew just making sure he's covering up his builder's crack. And this is Nathan who is spacing out for his cleats. And again, these are going to be fire supports because obviously we're over the garage door and we need to be using these in all circumstances anyway. So it's just getting a good fixing in the wall there so he can dress this away nicely around the garage breeze block and back to the consumer unit. Just to speak about that consumer unit while Nathan is demonstrating his skills here. Um, it is a split load board. They were type AC RCDs. Obviously, um, we need to change them to a type A, but we also need to consider the maximum load that those RCDs can carry. So we've gone for 100 amp options in place of the 63s that were installed. Um, the way the circuits are arranged, it's of no concern to us to put the EV on there with an MCB. Obviously, you're limited to your 9 milliamps of leakage current on that RCD, and we've taken measurements, as we always do, to make sure that that's not a factor. Ideally, we would have liked to do it on an RCVO, but obviously, the existing consumer unit's there, the spare ways in it, and sometimes you've got to work with what you can as best with the customer. So you can see Nathan's knocking in the linear and fire clips there, making sure he's got a nice fix in, and yeah, just roughly pointing out where he's going. So this is Matthew outside and he's got his cables through with his whisker box. So with the ohm, as I've said, it comes with a pre-wired lead. So you do need a local junction box somewhere for it. We would usually take the cabling straight up to a charge point. So this is a little bit of a different one on us. And um, yeah, Matt is just going to get that on the wall now and sort out his um, cable dressing. So you can see he's taken some holes in the back of that box. Obviously, we can weather seal those and get that fixed and ready to make our terminations inside. So there it is on the wall, and he's brought those cables in, and obviously we've got that sealed up in the back. So this is Matthew marking out the bracket, and there is a funny little clip to follow on to this that I'm going to leave in, and um, I'll go quiet while that's played in the background, hopefully, if I edit this together properly. You can see Matt is putting his combi a good use and he's popped his safety sunglasses on with the looks of it and he's going for the one glove approach it must be some sort of fashion statement um you know i'm not down with the kids so i don't know exactly why he's only wearing one glove but there we go and he's just having a little go i think with his milwaukee combi it is a beast actually that thing especially if you're going through timbers and you're on a lot of first fixing those milwaukee combis are hard to beat they really are so we've put that in competition with the Bosch actually a few times and it absolutely smashes it so yeah that thing is incredible um, yeah he's just popping the holes in there for his bracket and um, we'll start to get this ohm on the wall you can see there he's got his four fixing points so the ohm does have a bracket that goes on the back that it kind of locks down into 
and you can see here this is Matthew fixing it. So this is where I'm going to shut up in a second and you can just have a listen because I thought this was quite funny. What's wrong? What's wrong with them? It's not fucking level at all. Yeah, but this shit never goes perfect first time anyway. No one cares. Just. And you know what? I totally agree with Nathan. He's made a great point there that these things very rarely go perfectly at all times, and trying to pretend that that's the case on social media is such a waste of time. Um, I don't know why we make the effort to do it. So yeah, Matthew's been schooled there by his apprentice and he's just getting on with it and sharing what work really looks like and levelling this up as best he can. So you can see that's the, the back plate that the urn comes with and they're using the fixings that come with the kit there to make sure it's fixed in the way the manufacturer intended. You do have your levelling bars on there so you can have a good idea that you've got that level on the wall. And again you can see he's made a good job of that. So that's on. It is actually level, so he was doubting himself there for no reason whatsoever. He just needed his apprentice to guide him a bit. And here you can see the urn mounted on the wall. So again, this is how the customer wanted it. We've got that flexible cable that comes with it into the whisker box with the holster just to the side. They've got their cable dressed up and away across the top here. Nice and neat, as I say, with the fire fixings and then run across to the consumer unit. We'll have a little look at that in a minute. As I mentioned, we've swapped to the type A RCD at 100 amp, and I'll pop a picture up so you can see that. Um, obviously, the guys have got this all powered and they're gonna run it through the normal test sequences that we've showed on the channel. The length of the video, I'm not gonna show it here. If you wanna see testing of an EV charge point, just look two or three back. We've got loads of content on that. The ERM itself has um, the 4G SIM built into it, so it connects straight onto their backend, backend server. It is really simple to work and operate. It's got all of the pen fault, over voltage, and RCD protection built in. This really is a get it on the wall and turn it in kind of um, job, as long as all of the other considerations to do with your DNA service views and such are taken into account. Obviously, if you're gonna run a cable buried within the fabric of the building that doesn't have earth metallic Coverings, you need to be mindful of still having RCD protection, and because we had that on the split load board, we've used it anyway, as the manufacturer says you can. So that's the 100 amp uh, RCD there. That's our cat cable that we've just taken a couple of the cores for to join in. This is Matthew swapping out the RCD and modeling himself here, fixing the arm um, to the wall. So I think they've made an absolutely cracking job of this, as they do every day out installing EV charge points.